welcome back to my channel. I post all things motherhood. Um, as you can see, we have a bit of a visitor here today. She's not really wanting to be left alone. So we'll see how long she lasts. She might be in and out. Might have to get up a few times. Um, today's video, we're going to be talking about kind of, I guess, all of the things you need to get yourself started with cloth diapering. We decided to cloth diaper not only for the cost effectiveness of it, but also just to help out with our um, carbon footprint on the there are definitely a few cons to cloth diapering um, that I will talk about that aren't necessarily the most eco-friendly. Um, so if you're interested, just keep on watching and we'll jump on into it. So to get started, you're going to need, obviously, diapers. Now, there's a variety of different types of diapers. I highly recommend getting a few of each. So we started out with just covers. So a cover here is just a waterproof kind of shell for the diaper. Um, we started with these and flats. I don't actually have any flats on hand to show you at the moment, um, but they're just basically a big absorbent cloth um, that you can fold different ways. We started with just those, and then I've quickly learned that flats are more work than I was willing to do at the time. Sometimes I still do the occasional flat, but we then started investing in other types of diapers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we, um, we did purchase some pocket diapers, so a pocket diaper is just a diaper that's lined. Um, we bought ones that were lined with micro suede and fleece and found she actually has really sensitive skin. So we've recently switched to athletic looking jersey lined pocket diapers, but they just have the pocket you put the insert inside of. Um, once we switched to using a couple of these, mainly for overnights and when we're on the go, I quickly learned that I love the inserts that go with them. Um, they're just a square of absorbency, different materials, bamboo, and cotton, etc. <laughs> yeah, and um, I use these actually inside my covers now. Um, as long as it's not microfiber, it's safe to go against baby skin. So you can just put this right inside of the cover. You don't actually have to do the whole then stuffing a pocket. And you get the benefit of the covers that can be reused um, in between changes. You can just wipe them out as long as they've only uh, peed in them. Um, and then <laughs> for overnight, we like to use all-in-ones um, and contours. Uh, this is just one of our contours here. Uh, we use these just because she likes to sleep on her side and her stomach. And we found that the, just a regular pad inside of a cover didn't cover the sides. So when she would sleep on her side, it would actually leak out because she would pee and it would go obviously down to the side because she was laying on it. Um, so we started using contours overnight. Um, another thing you'll really need is some kind of storage. This is something I found to be a con for cloth diapering, um, is they do take up a lot of space. So you'll need some kind of storage system um, of where you can put them. So this is kind of our setup. We've got down here, we have all of our tri-folds, um, which is what I kind of wanted to do first. Then we have a few contours, and then these are our... Um, micro suede or fleece lined pockets. Um, I also have back here, you can see a few fleece liners and a fleece blanket that I tended to make more fleece liners with. Um, however, my daughter actually has a really sensitive skin and the fleece wasn't working too well. So we're keeping them all thinking maybe in the winter they might work better, but for now that's what we've got there. Um, here's where we store her bedtime diapers. So these are all in ones. Um, and then these are just extra clip-in inserts that we put in the all-in-ones. This bin is where we keep our covers, um, just all the different covers going there. And then back here we have um, pocket diapers that are athletic wicking jersey lined. Um, I find this breathes better, so my daughter has, like I mentioned, really sensitive skin, so this helps her not to get uh, a rash from them. On top we keep our inserts, we use these inside of the covers instead of doing flats. We did do flats for a while, they're just a lot more work and I found as long as we don't use microfiber that these are fine inside of a cover as well. And I mentioned we are starting cloth wipes, so we're still kind of getting there. So we have our cloth wipes right here and then we just have two reusable wipes containers that have disposables in them at the moment. And then all of our array of different <laughs> baby lotions and creams and such. Um, and then this is her changing station and right beside it is where we keep two different diaper pails. One is labeled disposables, that was when we were doing both, um, but now they're both just for cloth diapers so that we can have enough space basically to make it between washes because we wash every three to four days. Um, also highly recommend getting some kind of drying system, clothes dry, clothesline, clothes pegs, uh, rod in your laundry room, something like that. 
um, to help again with the environmental impact because it does take a lot to dry them. These are meant to absorb pee, so they absorb a lot of liquid. And when you wash them, they hold on to a lot of liquid as well. So when you put them in the dryer, they can take a few cycles. So if you can hang dry them even for a little while, it helps cut down on that time. So we've started hang drying um, during the day and then we just toss them in the dryer for a quick fluff after they've pretty much fully dried. And this is sort of the drying setup I've got. So these are those multi-peg clothes pins I was talking about. And I just hang them outside really anywhere I can find a hook um, to be able to get them to dry without having to use electricity. This isn't necessarily the best load to show because it doesn't have too much diaper stuff, but I do have the wet bags hanging over there and then just some regular laundry and then her overnight diapers are over here just because they're quite a bit heavier so like multi-peg clothespins don't work as well. Um, but So this is our retractable system. It's nothing fancy, but it's just another way to dry them without having to use the dryer. This also helps remove stains. It's called sunning the diapers. Um, as long as you put them out here when they're wet, it will help remove any stains that you have on them as well. Another thing you'll need, you won't need this right away if you're exclusively breastfeeding um, because exclusively breastfed uh, poop is water soluble, but as soon as you start giving solid foods or if you introduce... So exclusively breastfed poop is water soluble, but once you start introducing solids or formula of any kind, you do need to rinse the poop off um, because it's no longer water soluble, so you don't want it in your tub, your sink, or your washing machine, um, so it does need to go into the toilet so it goes into the sewage. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yes. Um, so you'll need some kind of sprayer of some sort, and I highly recommend a spray pal or a DIY version of that as well. Um, it can get quite messy if you don't have something, so I'll show you later in the video what we've done to work with that. And then we do have the toilet sprayer that just attaches to your um, toilet tank. Um, so we just got this one here on Amazon. Works wonderful. And then this is our kind of DIY spray pal. So it's just two garbage cans and we've cut the bottom out of this one. And then as you can see, we just clip the inserts onto the edge with a couple claw clips <laughs> and then you can spray them there. Um, ours actually fits perfectly into the toilet. So you can just put the first bin into the toilet and the second bin is just to catch any of the water slash store the sprayed off inserts until washed in. You'll also have to get yourself some cloth safe diaper cream or you can buy liners for your diapers so that you can use whatever diaper cream you'd like. You can get disposable liners um, or well they say compostable or flushable but they're really not meant to go in, the, um, in your sewage sewer system at all so don't flush them. Um, I'm not sure about compostable, you'd have to look into it in your area, what's considered compostable. But we chose to go with the reusable route, so you can just buy reusable liners, um, and then you can use any diaper cream you want. The reason you don't want to use a regular diaper cream on your cloth diapers, it can affect the absorbency of them, so they might not last as long, and then you have to try and scrub to get it all off and such. Um, especially if it contains zinc, it does a lot of staining and can cause absorbency issues. So we just use the liners, that way we don't have to worry about wrecking the absorbency of the diaper and the whole point of the liner is to let liquid go through it or beat off of it so it doesn't sit on the kid's skin anyway. So it doesn't matter for absorbency because it's not meant to absorb anything. And the last thing you'll kind of need to think about for cloth diapering to get started is how you want to store them once they're used until wash day. Mm -hmm. So for us, we chose to do a diaper pail route with reusable wet bags inside of them. Um, just for us, we wanted something that was closed. Uh, we have pets and things, I didn't want them playing with it. Um, but I do know a lot of people use like a laundry basket just lined with a wet bag or a garbage can lined with a wet bag. It really depends on, I guess, your climate and your environment because you don't want something to, if it's too warm, you don't want it to be a closed system because it can have a lot of issues, but you also have to worry about if it's like humid and such causing molding and things. So it's really, you'll have to look into what works best for your climate area, um, but we went with the diaper pail route. It works the best for us. Um, that's really all you need to get yourself started. It does sound like a lot, but you can purchase them over time while you're pregnant and certain things you won't need until later on anyway. So. Like you can buy yourself just a few diapers to start out to see what you like, buy a couple of each different type. Um, and once you find what you like, you can invest in buying more or you can even look secondhand. I purchased a lot of our diapers secondhand and then you can just strip and sanitize them and they're perfectly good to use on your baby. 
Um, and then you can also go the route of um, a diaper service if you wanted to as well. I don't know a whole lot about that, but I do know that they tend to only do flats and covers or pre-folds and covers. Um, yeah. Hello. Uh, and things like your spray pal, you won't need that if you're exclusively breastfeeding, so you won't need that right away. You can purchase it later on. Um, and a lot of these things you can also put on your registries if you're having a baby shower and such for people to buy for you. Um, just to help cut down on costs, but also so that you don't have to think about purchasing them. Um, I will say if you're having just one child, I don't personally think that you save a whole lot with cloth diapering um, because you have to purchase all the diapers and all the equipment to go with it. And then also uh, you have to account for the fact that like your electricity and your water bill will go up because you are washing that extra little bit of laundry. And like I said, they take a long time to dry if you do have to put them directly into the dryer. Um, so there's that to think about. Uh, but I do believe that if you're having multiple children, it will save you a lot in the long run. I think it saves you money um, in the beginning a little bit, but not a whole heck of a lot. It definitely is a lot more environmentally friendly for your first child uh, versus being cost efficient. Um, but you can do things to try and help cut down on the costs, such as like I mentioned, line drying, um, also making sure that you have a washing machine that's agitating things well, so they're getting cleaned <laughs> properly. Um, the first, well, you do multiple cycles to wash, but in the first wash, instead of having to rewash things because they didn't quite get clean, uh, we purchased some laundry agitator balls. Uh, they kind of look like little jacks, um, the little toys that you can put in your washing machine that help to make sure your clothes are getting moved around enough so they're fully getting clean. So we've put those in there and then for drying also to help we've put in some wool balls in our dryer uh, that help move things around again just so the air can get to everything so hopefully they dry faster when we do have to dry them in my washing machine i just use them for every load now um the little jacks that help to agitate everything i leave them in every load they don't just have to be for diapers that just helps us to make sure everything gets clean and then over my dryer, same thing, we have just some wool balls. So if it is a colder day or a rainy day, we can still dry the diapers. Um, so that's pretty much everything you need to get yourself started with cloth diapering. There is a whole lot to cloth diapering. It's much easier than it sounds once you get going in it. Um, and it's definitely one of those things that seems overwhelming because there's so much information out there. But once you start and dive into it, it's really much easier than it sounds. Um, and I'll make more videos in the future about cloth diapering if you guys would like. You can just let me know in the comments down below. But if you enjoyed today's video, I would love if you gave it a like. And I will see you in the next one.